Good day students! Welcome back to Maestrang Techie YouTube channel! We are now in week 7 of grade 9 science quarter 4 lesson. If you haven't watched our previous lesson for the past weeks, pause the video and check the links in the description box below. This week's lesson is all about heat engines and thermal efficiency. Interesting, right? Now, let's check out our learning objectives. Infer that heat transfer can be used to do work and that work involves the release of heat. Explain how heat transfer and energy transformation make heat engines like geothermal power plants work. If you want to know more about this lesson, please keep on watching. In your grade 7 science, you have learned that heat is related to temperature. Heat transfer may change one's temperature. This change in temperature, either a decrease or an increase, means that there is an energy transfer in the form of heat. This video focuses on heat and work, and how heat can be turned into work, and how work involves the release of heat. In our everyday life, heat transfer is always evident. Many times, we experience heat transfer when we do majority of our household chores, and even when we go on sports. But what exactly is heat transfer? Whenever there is a temperature change, heat transfer takes place. It is the transfer of energy from a high temperature object to a low temperature object. An example of heat transfer is boiling of water. The hot stove heats the pot and the pot heats the water inside. Once transfer, it can no longer be called heat. It becomes the internal energy of the body. Transfer of energy from hot objects to cool objects stops when the two attain the same temperature. The objects are said to be in thermal equilibrium. So, many processes involve heat transfer. It is hard to imagine a situation where no heat transfer occurs. There are three methods of heat transfer. The first one is the conduction. It is the transfer of heat due to direct contact between two objects or materials with different temperatures. The process of heat transfer in solids is called conduction. One example is the rod on firewood. Second method of heat transfer is convection. It is the transfer of heat from one location to the other by the movement of fluids. Examples are boiling of waters and the steam. The third method of heat transfer is what we call radiation. It is the transfer of heat by electromagnetic wave. And another example is the microwave oven. Now, let us talk about engines. One such object that allows us to produce mechanical work from type of energy is called an engine. If the energy that was used to perform work was thermal energy or heat, then the engine is called a heat engine. To perform work, heat is taken in by the engine from a heat source, also called the high temperature reservoir. The energy absorbed by the heat engine is used to perform useful work. However, not all the heat absorbed by the engine can be converted into useful work. There will always be a portion of heat that will be lost as a result of other interactions like friction. This lost heat is called a waste heat. This waste heat goes to the low temperature reservoir or the heat sink of that heat engine. The energy converted as useful mechanical work is equal to the difference in the heat input from high temperature reservoir and the heat output that was received by the low temperature reservoir. So work is equal to heat input minus heat output. Again class, heat engine is a device which converts thermal energy to mechanical energy. Examples of heat engine are power plants such as geothermal. There are three things that happen in a full cycle of a heat engine. First one, heat is added. It is an input heat which is relatively high temperature. Second, some of that energy from that input heat is used to do work. And third, the rest of the heat is removed at a relatively cold temperature. Furthermore class, a common type of heat engine is called combustion engine. 
In a combustion engine, heat is produced using a combustion process which in turn makes use of a fuel and an oxidizer for that fuel-like air. There are two classes of combustion engines. The first one is external combustion engine. Burning of fuel takes place outside the engine. Examples are steam and the piston engine that is shown in your screen right now. The second one is the internal combustion engine. Burning of fuel takes place inside the cylinder or turbine engine. Examples are gasoline or diesel engine. Most automobiles make use of either a diesel or a gasoline engine. In the case of gasoline engines, most have four cylinders, each containing a piston. Each piston undergoes a series of four movements or strokes. As shown in your screen right now is a four-stroke cycle in a gasoline engine. The first stroke is the intake stroke. The intake valve opens, allowing the cylinder to receive the fuel-air mixture as the piston moves downward. The second one is the compression stroke. The piston moves up, compressing the fuel-air mixture. The third one is the power stroke. The spark plug at the top of the cylinder causes the mixture to ignite and combust, making its temperature high. And the last one is the exhaust stroke. The combusted gases are pushed out of the open exhaust bulb through an upward motion on the piston. Now, let us talk about thermal efficiency. The thermal energy produced from the combustion of fuel-air mixture is transformed into mechanical energy which moves the car. However, not all thermal energy is converted into useful work. This thermal energy which is not converted to useful work is called waste heat. These heat losses are unavoidable and greatly limit the efficiency of heat engines. For example, the engines of cars are only 30% efficient. This means that for every 100 joules of thermal energy produced by a combustion of gasoline, only 30 joules are used to actually move the car. Therefore, it is impossible to construct a heat engine that is 100% efficient, which can fully convert all the heat into a useful work. An engine that converts energy into more work and less weight is said to be more efficient. However, according to Sadi Carnot, he found out that while it is true that we can express efficiency in terms of work, the efficiency of ideal heat engines depends only on the temperatures of the hot and cold reservoir. According to him, an engine operating between two reservoirs of higher temperature difference is more efficient than an engine operating between reservoirs of nearly the same temperatures. Now, let us have the equation for efficiency. It is calculated as efficiency equals work done divided by input heat times 100%. But since work is just the input heat minus the exhaust heat, the equation becomes efficiency equals the input heat minus the exhaust heat divided by the input heat times 100%. Simplifying this equation, we have input heat divided by input heat that is 1 and we have the remaining minus exhaust heat divided by input heat times 100%. Where Q sub C is the energy removed by heat or energy in cold reservoir and Q sub H is the energy added by heat or energy in hot reservoir. The equation for efficiency can also be modified to use temperature measurement instead of the energy values. Therefore, we can say that efficiency is equal to 1 minus T sub C, where T sub C is the absolute temperature in cold reservoir, divided by T sub H, where it is the absolute temperature in hot reservoir, times 100%. Take note class, the temperatures are the absolute temperatures on the Kelvin scale. Now let us have a sample problem. Sample problem number one. What is the efficiency of a gasoline engine that receives 193 joules of energy from combustion and lose 125 joules by heat to exhaust during one cycle? The given are 
Q sub C or the energy removed by heat which is 125 joules. Q sub H which is the energy added by the heat and that is 193 joules. And we are looking for its efficiency. We are going to use this formula, the one that we had a while ago. Now, let us substitute our given to our formula. And we have 1 minus, we have Q sub C divided by Q sub H times 100%. Following the PEMDAS rule, we need first to calculate the numbers inside the parentheses and do the division first before the subtraction. 125 joules divided by 193 joules, we have 0 0.6476 and so on. Next, subtract 1 minus 0 0.6476, we have 0 0.3523 and so on. Do not forget to multiply it to 100%. The product is 35.23%. Do not forget to round off your final answer. Now let us have sample problem number 2. Suppose a steam engine receives steam at 600 Kelvin. The engine uses a part of this thermal energy for work. It exhausts the rest to a condenser at a temperature of 350 Kelvin. What is the maximum efficiency of this steam engine? Our given, we have the temperature in cold reservoir, which is 350 Kelvin, and the absolute temperature in the hot reservoir, which is 600 Kelvin. And we are looking for its efficiency. Our formula, the one that we had a while ago. Now, let us substitute our given to our formula. Efficiency is equal to 1 minus 350 Kelvin divided by 600 Kelvin times 100%. Again, we need to follow the PEMDAS rule. Divide first 350 divided by 600 and this is the quotient. Next, 1 minus 0 0.5833 and so on. We have the difference of 0 0.4166 and so on. Then multiply it to 100%, we have the product of 41.67%. Do not forget to round off your final answer. And that is how you are going to solve problems involving thermal efficiency. And that's it for our lesson this week. I hope you learned something new again. If this video helped you, please do like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell button to keep you updated for my future videos. Comment now for a shout out. Shout out to Jerlaine Bailon, John Paul Imesolania, Ria Solomon, Rainiel De Vera. Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for watching. You may also subscribe to Lady Alchemist YouTube channel for more advanced chemistry lessons and to KCMC TV YouTube channel for some inspirational spoken poetry videos. Bye class and see you on my next video.